So Blender version 4.2 was just released, and my favorite new feature in the new update is that Blender EV now supports material displacements. So if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, then you know that I make many procedural material tutorials, and so in the video I always tell you that you have to go over here to the render engine and make sure you're using Cycles Render because many of my materials use displacements. Well that's no longer the case in the new Blender version of 4.2, you can follow my tutorials which use displacements and you can use Blender EV if you want to. So I've just opened up the new Blender version, Blender 4.2, and I'm just going to jump over here to my Asset Libraries workspace here, and I have my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, and this is a product which I've created which comes with all of my procedural materials. If you'd like to check out my Ultimate Material Pack, I'll have a link in the description. I'm going to go here to the Render Engine, and I'm going to use Blender EV, and I'll just go up into the Rendered Mode. So here in the 3D viewport here, I've just gone to the Add menu, and I just added an Icosphere. And then right here, I just turned the subdivisions up to like a six, so it is nice and detailed. Because when you are using the material displacements, you still need to have a high poly mesh so that the material displacements has lots of geometry to displace the mesh. So I'm just gonna find a cool material to use to show you. So I'm gonna be adding in this asteroid in my ultimate material pack. So I'll just drop this in here. So this is really cool to see in Blender Eevee. You can see here on the side of the object, it's actually using the material displacements. And if you purchase my ultimate blender procedural material pack all the materials come as customizable node groups so i can change some of the settings so i'm just going to like turn the bump strength down because it is a little bit strong but then i can just turn up this displacement strength and pop out the mesh so that is super cool it's really cool to see this happening in blender ev because when i was using material displacements i always expect to see kind of that grainy viewport in cycles render when cycles is loading up but as you can see it's working in real time in blender ev let's add another material so I'm gonna search for my chunky concrete here so I can just drop it from the asset browser onto the object and I'm gonna go into edit mode and just scale this down scale the object down so it's a better size or if I wanted to of course I could just change the scale here on the chunky concrete material and then let's turn up the displacement strength to kind of pop that out and then I also wanted to preview one of my sci-fi metal materials so what I'll do is just delete this object I'm gonna add a cube and I'll scale this cube down and I'll just apply the scale. And then I'll use the object context menu and shade this smooth. We're still using the material displacements, so the material displacements need more geometry to pop out the mesh. So I'll go into edit mode, I'll press Control E, and then I'm just going to subdivide this and I'll subdivide it many times so it's really detailed. All right, so now what I'm gonna do here is search for my sci-fi metal material. I'll drop this right here. And I will have links in the video description to all the tutorials of these different materials that I'm showing you and I can change the scale of the material so I might just make this a little bit smaller that is really cool and then let's also change the displacement strength kind of pop that out maybe turn up the scale a little bit that is looking so cool so now if you want to set up the material displacements yourself on an object I'll show you how to do that so I'll just delete this object I'll go to the add menu and I'm just going to add an icosphere again and I will shade it smooth. So let's jump over here to the shading workspace. And again, of course, make sure you are using Blender EV. So I'll go into the rendered viewport mode. And here in the shader editor, let's just add a new material. So now just for an example, I'll go to the add menu and I'll add a noise texture. So I'll drop the noise texture here. I'm also going to search for a texture coordinate node and we're going to drop the texture coordinate here. And then I'm going to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. So I'll use the object coordinates into the vector. So now to put it into the displacements, we want a factor here to be going into the displacement. Now it's not going to work correctly and that's because we need to add the displacement node here. So I'll go to the add menu and we're gonna search for the displacement node and we'll put the displacement in between the noise texture and the material output here. And then we want the noise texture factor to be going into the height value of the displacement. And that way it's gonna correctly convert the black and white data into displacement data. Now it's adding some bump here. You can see it's all bumpy, but if you look here on the side of the object, it's not actually displacing the mesh. And that's because you need to click right over here to go to the material settings and you need to scroll down and if you open up the settings here and then go here to the displacement we need to change the bump only 
to displacement and bump. And now you can see it looks all bumpy. So now we can change some of the settings here. So maybe I'll turn the scale down. We can also turn the detail up to make it really detailed. And then you can also change the displacement scale right here on the displacement node to make it more strong or less strong. And if you wanna make this look more like an asteroid, you could turn up the roughness a bit so it's a bit more rough. And then you could also turn this base color down so you could maybe make it like a dark gray color. And just like that, you already have a really cool asteroid material using the material displacements in Blender EV. And then what you could also do is duplicate this object, maybe go into edit mode and scale it up a bit. You could also press the O key to turn on the proportional editing, and then you can kind of pull around the mesh and make it kind of random. And as you can see very quickly now, we have some really cool detailed asteroid materials. So this is by far my favorite update of Blender version 4.2. And now my materials in my ultimate Blender procedural material pack work much better in Blender Eevee because the display actually work. And if you'd like to check out all the new features of Blender 4.2, you can check out this page on Blender's website. I will have the link in the description and you can see all the new features. And if you're interested in purchasing my ultimate Blender procedural material pack, which has over 200 procedural materials, you can check that out with the link in the description. And my ultimate procedural material pack has all these materials pre-set up in Blender's asset browser, and they all have custom thumbnails, and they are sorted into these different catalogs, and they all have these customizable node groups, so you can easily customize the material for your object. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.